So let's return to your research now for, for a minute. Uh, one of the things that I think is really impressive is the number of different areas. You highlighted these six different, different areas. Maybe you can give our viewers some uh, advice and some insight on how you uh, got involved in all these different topics. I think that's a, sometimes a daunting thing for young researchers to do, is to step outside of what they know and to go into all these different areas. So maybe you can uh, give us some insight here. Uh, if you look at these six research projects that we have, it, it may have an impression that these are uh, different, quite different research projects. But for us, they all are devoted to the same problem. We are trying to discover how do molecules react. So we are studying reactivity of molecules and uh, we use different reactions to study the same problem. And for example, no, no, now we are trying to really capture the reactivity of molecules and we, we are trying even to record a, a something like a video, how the molecules mm -hmm. will react, how they come together, how they will arrange, form a transition state and go to the products. Right now we cannot do it for real molecules because there is no uh, experimental technique which we would do it in a complex system in solution. Uh, right now we can do it for nanoscale, like for reactions involving nanoparticles. With modern electron microscopes we can really record a video how do the molecules react. So I would say that this is my f like a goal that, uh, that mm -hmm. I have and my dream in order to really visualize chemical reaction. Uh, in such a way, we, we will find the answers to most intriguing questions about the mechanism if we really can see how our molecules are coming together. And in this point of view, all the research that we are doing it's, uh, very, can be united. So mm -hmm. we study reactions and we go to this aim from different directions. You mentioned uh, color graphics. Um, one of the things that uh, I, I notice every time I visit your webpage or even I follow you on Twitter, I follow your research group, or I listen to your lecture is this the, the beauty of the graphics and the way you present chemistry and I think this is so important for chemistry in the 21st century and publishing in the 21st century so do you have any advice for, for people how do you do this and how do you make such wonderful artwork thank you for this question uh, as I mentioned we have a different research projects in my lab and we have also a experimental topics where we do experiment, we also have a computational topics, we do computational modeling and some of my group members are really very well experienced in computer graphics. So all the graphics that you have seen in my publication and on our website was made by students and postdocs in my lab. So we never make any photographs, it's just computer designed graphics. And I can show you just one example how we can make it. Sure. So first we draw the idea <laughs> by hand. So you do it the old-fashioned way first. Yeah, the yeah. old-fashioned way. So this is the cover. The uh, cover, right. You, you can do it. 2015, <laughs> yeah, I recognize it, yeah. So we draw the idea by hands because um, there should be some uh, chemical idea behind the graphics. Mm -hmm. It's not only a fancy picture. Even fancy picture is nice because it attracts attention to chemistry, but we always try to put some meaning in the, in the picture. So if we first to try to draw the, uh, the picture and um, to discuss what it should uh, show. For example, here we show a proton transfer in the mechanism in such an unusual way. And this particular uh, picture was made by uh, my, one of my researchers, Evgeny Gordiev. He's, very, he's a theoretical chemist, he's with okay. complications, <laughs> and he's very well familiar with computer graphics. So we draw this picture. Is that, is that your drawing or his drawing? This is his drawing. It's his drawing, yeah. okay. Uh, then he did a computer model. So every part of this picture was a separate computer model, like this one. And for example, we talked about it on Friday. And when I came on, my, on Monday, we had wow. already this beautiful picture. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And the uh, most important to make these pictures is uh, to be inspired in chemistry. You should really feel very you feel this inspiration that are coming from molecules, from chemistry, from reactions, and um, one tries to really capture this inspiration into the pictures. And nowadays it is not as difficult as it may seem, because there are uh, plenty of uh, software which can do three-dimensional modeling, and several programs are, programs are even free of charge, so you can download in on your computer and start. So if you, if you ask about an advice, I can say that making these color pictures is not as difficult as it may seem. So try modern three-dimensional software and you will be surprised. You can make a real world pictures looking like re real pictures very easily. And uh, uh, of course my main advice is to always put some meaning and some chemistry into these pictures. I agree.
You will always make the editor-in-chief happy when you show artwork like that, both chemically correct and also just visually stunning.